feels like in recent years, every single fighting game either has some mechanic nobody can stand, or a character that single-handedly ruins the game. And Guilty Gear Strive is no different. So if you've been following this game for the past year or so, probably the number one character that has really been taking the heat of being really unfair and stupid has been Cold Lewis Dickinson. But with one of the main pain points of the community being nerfed, which was the White Wild Assault, in his case, it's a half screen-ish invincible poke, kinda, that's also plus. Wild Assault in particular is probably the mechanic that the community has had the most complaints about since the devs showed that you could break the wall and return to neutral in this game. And for a little bit after this got nerfed, we had some peace. Everyone was pretty happy with this patch, outside of Viking players, and of course. But after a little bit, a new villain appeared. Reintroducing Slayer. Slayer is a longtime regular in competitive Guilty Gear and he's in every Guilty Gear game that's being played competitively right now. Axon Corpus R, Guilty Gear Exerd, and now Strive. And also, right now, he just has a huge target on his back. So why are people so annoyed with Slayer at the moment? In order to figure this out, first we have to look at what type of character Slayer is. Slayer is one of the simpler characters in the game, and he's classified as a power type, like Mei and Potemkin. As in, when he hits you, he does a lot of damage. But damage is not the only way that the game shows you how strong Slayer is. So in Mei's case, for example, she walks around holding a ship anchor. And while they don't specify how much the anchor weighs, the jellyfish ship that she flies around with and Johnny is quite big. So this anchor could weigh a couple of tons, right? Now Slayer uniquely has no weapon. So the way he shows off his strength comes off in a lot of his moves. So for starters, he's the only character in the game right now that has an attack that instantly wall sticks that's not a super. He also has a 100 meter super that can be used for cash outs and it does a ton of damage. But not only does he have these effects on his attacks, also subtly a lot of his attacks just have an extra oomph to them. For example, his 5H or his 2H. But animations aside, this also comes across in his frame data. So for starters, his close slash. Now his close slash is in the group of close slashes in the game that are plus three, where your average close slash is plus one. And he's the only other character in the game besides Soul to have a plus unblock far slash, and his is more advantageous. Plus four compared to Soul's plus two. Finally, to round out all these points, his command grab upgrades all of his attacks to a special counter hit, making it so that he can convert things with no meter that he would not be able to normally. For all the upsides of his strength though, he does have some restrictions around these things, mainly in that he's not very mobile. He has a step dash like Johnny. And similarly to Johnny, he is not able to dash block. On top of that, he's probably in contention to have maybe the worst backdash in the game. So while his backdash looks super cool, and he has a special move he can do out of his backdash, uniquely the invincibility on his backdash is while he is invisible. You can say he's invincible while he's invisible. Try saying that three times fast. So once Slayer actually starts moving, he is vulnerable this entire time. making his backdash pretty tricky to use. So with that in mind, what are the pain points that people have with this version of Slayer? If I had to compare Strive Slayer compared to previous versions like Exert, I would say that he has to play a little bit more risky, but he does more damage, somehow. And the first pain point really is how much damage he does. You would think it would be just about big counter hits like 2H or Sweep, but getting command grab also means you could potentially take a ton of damage, including moves you would not expect him to be able to combo off of normally, like his high-low off dandy step. On top of that, the threat of a high damage character means you also might not feel safe against the character until the game is over, which leads to the next thing, which would be about his HP. Right now, a common thread among stronger characters in this game is having high health. So some of these characters, like say Slayer or Anji, have like actual high health. So Asuka with the barrier, Potemkin and Nago have the highest HP totals, and Slayer is at the top of this list too, with 566 effective 
HP. Effective HP is taking the combination of the character's defensive modifier and their guts to see how much HP they actually have. Without accounting for these two factors, all characters in the game have the same HP, and I'm not making this up, 420. So with this in mind, there are also characters in the game that people say have too much HP for the type of character they are. You hear this about characters like Mei, who I'm playing right now, and she has 533 HP. And another character that gets this a lot is actually Happy Chaos, who in the scope of the game doesn't really have that much HP. So he has 499 HP. But out of what we would consider to be the technical characters in the game, he has the second most. The first being Asuka. So the thing is, having high HP is not just about the health itself and being able to make a lot of mistakes. It's also about gaining resource. This idea might sound weird, but hear me out. So the big thing is that the highest HP characters have the opportunity to get 50 meter while getting hit because they're going to endure hits. So for example, I have the good old buddy Biken here against Ram. One of the first really big breakthroughs I had with Biken was about stabilizing her throw mix up. And there are certain characters, honestly, I think it's more than half the characters in this game that you could essentially two touch from a throw, which is incredibly strong. So against Ram, we get a throw, go for this mix up, build some meter. And from here, after this knockdown into Tatami, she gets 50 meter into Yozansen after a close slash. And this is death for Ram. I even went through on my own and made sure to memorize what characters I could do this to because it made Viking's throw much more valuable to me. That being said, what happens when we do it to a character like Slayer who has like top 5 HP? Well, we go for the throw, hit him with the cross, do the combo. Now I get 50 meter, go for the Yozansen. And the wall is going to break here and Slayer is going to have just a crumb of health. But the health is not the most important thing here. The most important thing here is that he has 50 meter. There's a lot of things that a character like this can do with 50 meter. Now in older Guilty Gear games, since 25 meter is the baseline magic number for pretty much everybody. Exert, of course, it's something into YRC. And XX is a little bit more character specific because it involves the FRC and that's applied to specific moves. So this thing about building meter from getting hit is felt way harder in Strive because you need 50 meter to start going crazy. So that means in Slayer specific case, not only does he do a lot of damage just from the beginning of the round, but not only is it going to be harder for you to finish him off, he's also going to have the resource in order to mount a comeback. Slayer's meter usage itself is a pain point for players. For starters, it leads into Pile Bunker Confirms. It makes Dandy Step stronger with the threat of Pile Bunker. It lets him be more belligerent in neutral. And finally, if you're a zoner, it means you cannot fire the projectile anymore because you have to worry about super map a hunch. Now, this super is not the fastest super of all time. It is 14 frame startup, which is pretty slow for this game. But this plus one is the magic number here. So the larger this number, the more time the person attacking can do something after the super starts. We generally call this a super flash. And this is the time where the game kind of freezes and zooms in on the character before their super actually activates. So this is the logic behind Eno's Megalomania super. So this super is plus zero after the super flash. So once she actually starts doing it, you can't really move. Looking at my lever here, I'm holding up once I see the screen freeze, I can't do anything. So you have to be moving already to escape it. This means though that whoever is doing any attack to Slayer when he does this, they pretty much don't have enough time to PRC. You saw my inputs slamming RC there and I was not able to escape. So this really opens up his neutral against these characters once he has meter. Because remember, previously we mentioned, he's not good at moving around the screen. And yet, despite his movement, his neutral still gives people problems. For individual moves, I'm sure people would start by talking about his 2H. I think it might be better to start with his very unassuming 5K. Now this move is pretty crazy. For starters, it's huge. and has quite a few options off it, with it being jump cancelable, cancelable into sweep, and cancelable into 6H. Important options that leave him closer to the opponent. If he uses this at the start of the round and gets a counter hit, 
he can combo into bite without you being able to burst if you do not burst immediately. So here, if you played the older games and you only started playing Strive because he came out, you'll be surprised to learn that they made his sweep special cancelable. So this thing is pretty good. Not only can you set up a pile bunker route from round start position, that also breaks the wall, but he can also frame trap off it with P map up, which could also lead to big return, especially from round start. And even if it's blocked, he's minus one which means he cannot be punished by throw, and he's not even in throw range most of the time. Speaking of Mappa, both the P and K versions of Mappa are incredibly strong. You're able to set up really dirty space traps using Mappa, and at max range, if you can do a dash cancelled Mappa hunch, you can actually make it plus. This move is quite fast, and it reaches from very far, so having something like this is incredibly strong. But of course, I couldn't top off this section without talking about 2H. This move is not fast, this move is not active, but the biggest thing about it is that it's just huge. Now this move crushes lows from phase 5 to 15, so not only the aforementioned P Mappa Hunch, but just when he's generally spaced away from somebody and it's kind of evenish, he's able to set up a situation like this. It might look weird because this move is not fast, but because of the low crush, He's able to beat characters typical moves they would mash in that situation as punches would never reach anyway so most people would be trying to do a kick of some sort if you don't have a 5k that goes far enough you have to think of alternative ways to deal with the situation usually involving slower moves or movement to deal with this finally and this is lesser known about this move when he is striking this dandy pose he actually retracts his hurt box slightly with Eno here at round start position, you're able to hit him with 5H basically with no problem. But if he was to do 2H at the same time, he would win because he slightly retracts his hurt box. So for neutral, he creates a kind of awkward fast guessing game around hitbox hurtbox interactions as well as his typical pressure situations where he forces you to make fast guesses based on what he's going to do. And all these things aside, the last kind of pain point which kind of ties everything together is that People look at Slayer like he's an easy character. Simple, straightforward, and strong characters are always going to have more shade thrown at them than characters that are perceived to be more difficult. People are asking for nerfs already, and the main thing is that Slayer is the same as Launch, but system mechanics have changed. Mainly around Wild Assault, Burst, and Meterless reversals into Roman Cancel. In my opinion, the DPRC change and the Wild Assault change really helped put him in the limelight. Because of how this character plays neutral, he doesn't really mind not getting a knockdown with Wild Assault, and with 50 meter, you can't really zone him. He can make himself advantageous from many ranges with Mappa Hunch and try to close in from there. And like many Strike Throw characters, not having to worry about DPRC into either a wall break from anywhere or for a couple of characters, a 50 50 is definitely nice this patch. So, with all that said, what do I think they will do about this character? Uh, for starters, as of this recording, we do have a tentative date, or I guess a D date, for the start of Guilty Gear Season 4. Which, funny enough, for all the people who are looking for nerfs from this character, it's Halloween. A spooky day for all people wanting buffs for their characters and nerfs for characters they strongly dislike. And I mean it as far as buffs and nerfs. It's a major patch which tend to have big actual changes to both the system and characters, as opposed to the small patches that we get in between seasons that generally tweak things and don't really nerf things heavily, and they don't even go that far with adjusting system mechanics usually. And sometimes they don't touch DLC characters at all. Normally the justification is the character has not been out for long enough. The most famous example in this game so far is probably Sin. So Sin came out a month before a balance patch in Season 2. And the community pretty much agreed, and I would say they were correct, on Sin was pretty undertuned when he came out. But to be fair to the devs, I do get that one month might not be enough time to really assess a character's strength. But because of this, Sin was basically the same kind of like weakish character for more than six months. Asuka was the last character in Season 2, and despite being out for a decent amount of time before Season 3, they also chose to not change the character until... 3.5. So for people who are hoping for direct nerfs to this character, despite precedence not being on your side, he has been out for a good amount of time. Slayer released in May and this patch again is coming out in Halloween. So five months, right? I think that's enough time personally, but we don't know. 
if they do choose to nerf him, there's pretty much two ways that developers tend to adjust characters. Now, one of the more common requests I've heard is to just lower his HP. And I'm pretty sure they're not gonna go this route. One method that the devs have tended to use in order to balance characters is address one of the tools and adjust it so that it's still really strong, but has some direct counterplay. So for instance, the thing I mentioned of 2H before, making his hurt box not retract or even a little bit bigger here would help more than you realize. And it's been done before with Nagoryuki's Shizuru Yuki or the DP. The other route they can use is do something that doesn't really affect how the character plays in a direct way at all, but affects the way that everyone else plays against them. So saying on a fellow vampire, in season 2.5 they made it so Nago takes more damage the more blood that he's used. This doesn't change how Nago plays too too much outside of he just kind of dies faster in some cases, but it does affect all other characters playing into him because if someone uses a lot of blood they'll still play like the same game around 2s and 5h and trying to control space and get the blood resource back but if someone hits the nago player they'll be rewarded more than in previous versions where this was not the case now how they would do this with slayer i'm not so sure the last way they tend to tone things down is just by adding more scaling to certain moves so either making the starter do less damage or making it so you can't use a move so much in your combo. So for example, previously Biken didn't really have a restriction around using close slash in her combos at all and her close slash ground bounce. So this is pretty useful. In season three, they made it so you really can only use it like three times. So probably the big target here would be Pile Bunker, both making it so that it does less damage and making it so that you can't do it as many times in a combo. I don't even think he does it too much. I haven't seen more than three, not counting like a wall splat into wall break, but it's just something that they tend to do. So I wanted to include it. But yeah, that's pretty much what's up with Slayer, the new villain of Guilty Gear at the moment. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you're looking for Guilty Gear coaching, of course, uh, I have that on Metify, metify.gg slash at Lore Knight. I stream basically every day and uh, I've been going to the locals and restreaming those too, plus special stream events that I've been posting in the community tab on YouTube. So if you want to check that stuff out, it always happens first on twitch.tv before I post them on YouTube. So that's twitch.tv slash Lord Knight. Uh, this patch is ending soon too, so I'm planning on doing one actual final tier list for season three. The thing I did with K7 was I didn't know it was going to be a video, it was just me kind of thinking of how I was feeling about the patch. but. I've got a decent idea of how I feel, which kind of sucks because we don't have a lot of time to do this patch, so I don't have like the six months or whatever to really put all my thoughts together. But I do want to have something left over from this patch specifically before we move into season four. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.